Okay, good afternoon to all our colleagues. So on behalf of uh, Cancer Research Group, Professor Fadi Farahat and Arab Medical Association Against Cancer, we are welcoming you in our ABC Oncology Educational Courses that you know this activity is endorsed by AMAC, UICC and ASCO and it's awarded by two CMEs from AMAC. Uh, so I'm welcoming our panelists <clears throat> uh, regarding our uh, activity of today will be breaking through advances in the treatment of early stage triple negative breast cancer. Uh, our first activity will be uh, presented by Dr. Uh, Mohsen Mukhtar, Professor Mohsen Mukhtar. He is clinical oncologist at Cairo University. We have also as panelists uh, with us today, Dr. Maher Seifo, Professor of Medical Oncology at Damascus University, and Professor Dr. Khaled Ibrahim. Uh, he is a hemato-oncologist at uh, Beirut Arab University. Uh, Dr. Mukhtar will start uh, our quiz session. So please, Dr. Mukhtar, the floor is yours. Thank you very, very much, uh, Sami. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, the organizers, especially Dr. Fadi and uh, his team, as well as uh, the Cancer Research Group, for inviting me to be part of this. Uh, a very interesting topic. I think it's, it's going to be a, a good thing to hear um, and go through. But before we start off, I think we are going to have a little quiz that we'd like you all to start off by uh, answering. I've shared my screen and uh, we'll start off with the quiz today. So please uh, get up to vote. We have 20, 72 participants, which is really, really excellent. And I think, I hope that we will uh, we'll get them all to uh, have a vote. So, um, this quiz was, was given out priorly uh, um, uh, according um, to, to several quizzes before, and we've had the answer of peers like you, and we'll compare what we get as answers with the answers of, that the peers had uh, priorly advised or what the answer, what we think the right answer is and the justification behind that. So please feel free to, to uh, vote as well as to ask any questions. So with 2 million new breast cancer cases, uh, this was the figure in 2018. Unfortunately, if we look, and I'm sure Professor Semi will, uh, is well aware of that, the rise of frequency of breast cancer in our region is actually growing. Um, the subtypes with, in which triple negative breast cancer occurs, I think one of the things that we need to consider when we are checking for triple negative breast cancer is our pathology because um, having your pathologist on hand and giving you a proper reading on the HER2 and ER is really essential because if you uh, store your pathology sample for more than 48 hours, then it will turn out to be triple negative while it was in fact not triple negative. So I think that's something that is uh, going to be seen um, in the coming years. And I know that in Egypt, we put on place um, sort of KPIs so that we can get proper sampling of this. Again, triple negative breast cancer considered to be one of those cancers that is difficult to treat in breast cancer. 
the biology and the potential of uh, treatments that we have, definitely nothing in the numbers that we have for HER2 positive or for uh, luminal breast cancer, whether it's the CDK4 sixes, the anti-HER2 therapy that we have for uh, the other type uh, subtypes of breast cancer. So this is a, a little quiz prior to uh, the pres presentations that are going to be given today. And again, I would urge you to vote. We are now up to 81 participants, so we hope we get 81 votes. So the first question is, triple negative breast cancer is seen in approximately what percentage of breast cancer? 5%, 30%, 15%, or 40%? Please vote and submit. Goodness, I think we can give 30 seconds for each question. Okay, so 53% of us chose 15%. I can see that we have 26% uh, voting for 30% and 21 for 5%. So I'll close up this one and get back to uh, the answer. Now, now, this is definitely in line with, uh, the, with your peers other, throughout the world. Uh, mostly it's at 15%, we're 59 uh, and actually 58% of us voted for the 15%. So we're, we're definitely in line with any of our peers. We know that this is uh, breast cancer that has neither expression of estrogen progesterone receptor or overexpression or amplification of the uh, epidermal growth factor receptor uh, HER2, and it compromises around 15% of breast cancers. Unfortunately, as I said, in our region, because of sometimes lack of availability of pathologists and proper pathology uh, confirmation in labs, um, sometimes we tend to have higher levels of triple negative breast cancer, but actually it, it's probably a false result because of the lack of proper uh, pathology in your area. The next question is, which of the following statements about triple negative breast cancer is accurate? Um, it is characterized by late metastasis. BRCA mutations are found in the majority of triple negative breast cancer most commonly diagnosed in Asian, Hispanic, non-Hispanic white women, and the most triple negative metast uh, breast cancers metastasize early in the course of the disease. Please vote. Well. We're up to 87 participants, so hopefully 87 votes. Uh, Dr. Mohsen, just to announce that the activity rate in French is available. Yes, uh, the interpretation. Just to click in interpretation. Okay, most of triple negative breast cancers metastasize in the early course, that's 61. Uh, and BRCA mutations are found in the majority of triple negative breast cancer. That comes in a second. I think that uh, is going to be highlighted out in, in one of our talks and characterized by late metastasis. I personally voted for D, which is uh, here at 61%. And if we look at what our peers voted for, again, uh, most of the peers voted for uh, it being a, a metastatic disease in the early course of the disease. And actually, when you find a patient with metastatic breast cancer, most probably, uh, if you find her uh, with a small breast cancer uh, mass, it's probably going to be a triple negative breast cancer. We can see that uh, triple negative commonly metastasizes early. BRCA mutations are found in 20% of triple negative breast cancer, not uh, most of them. And the studies show that triple negative breast cancer is more frequent in uh, um, um, black and Hispanic yeah. other than Asian and non-Hispanic uh, white women. The next question is, which of the following statements about molecular subtyping of triple negative breast cancer is accurate? 
molecular subtype has no clinical re relevance. Basal-like, basal-1 is the most common molecular subtype. Luminal androgen receptor is the most common molecular seen in a menopausal patient. Molecular subtypes have not been identified. Please vote. So basal-like is the most common molecular subtype. I think probably that is the, the correct answer. Uh, luminal androgen receptor uh, is probably not the most common in molecular, and we do have molecular subtypes, yet they have uh, still to have um, verifiable clinical relevance, especially when we're talking about the new adjuvant. Oh, yes. So what we can see is that most of our peers voted for basal-like being the most molecular subtype. These, um, they have four uh, tumor-specific triple negative subtypes, the basal, the two basals, basal one and basal two, uh, the subtype characterized by tumor infiltrating sites, uh, subtype characterized by association of mesenchymal cells, and luminal subtype, which is uh, controlled by androgen uh, uh, receptors. And again, nowadays we're adding on to, to this what's going to be the low HER2 positive breast cancer. That, so that's HER2 1 plus and 2 plus. And we've seen that data coming in from deroxetecan um, in these low expressors, the Destiny 04 trial has added on in, in terms of an option for patients. These patients were actually considered as triple negative breast cancer. Now, maybe we're going to be considering them as low HER2 uh, expressors. Obviously, the androgen receptor subtype is the least uh, 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 um, commonest of uh, the ones that happens in uh, postmenopausal patients at uh, diagnosis. The fourth question, which of the following statements about the treatment of advanced metastatic breast cancer is true? A TISO plus NAP paclitaxel can be used for uh, unresectable triple negative breast cancer PD1 positive. Uh, Secatizumab is indicated in first line. BRCA mutation triple negative breast cancer is less likely to respond to carbo based uh, therapy. PARP do not show a benefit in triple negative breast cancer with a BRCA mutation. And here, the catches do not show a benefit. Please vote. So out of these results, we got a TISO being at 66%, uh, Sakatizo so coming in at 15%, BRCA mutated is uh, at 17%. Well, let's look at what our peers said. I think they said exactly the same, though I would personally have removed the TISO now paclitaxel being used for the unresectable pd one positive. I think uh, the trials, whether it is with the paclitaxel or the NAP paclitaxel, again, um, maybe, and we, we might hear a bit about this in, in the presentations, were withdrawn from uh, the FDA. I would rather have put in uh, Pembro in, in, in rather than, uh, than this, and especially if we're talking about unresectable in terms of new adjuvant setting. Secatizumab so comes in in second line, and uh, uh, if we look at BRCA mutated, obviously uh, platinum-based therapy is uh, going to add on benefit rather than docetaxel. And we know that PARP shows a clear benefit in triple negative uh, breast cancer, whether in the adjuvant setting from the Olympia or from the Olympiad in the metastatic uh, setting. Last question before we leave you to the... To, um, to the great box that we're having. Which of the following statements about the treatment of triple negative breast cancer is accurate? Uh, 
A new adjuvant approach is preferred in early stage triple negative breast cancer. The addition of carbo to pre op chemo has not shown to improve PCR. Platinum agents are recommended in the adjuvant setting. And the first line CPI did not improve response. Also, immunotherapy in the first line did not, uh, 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 does not improve response in triple negative breast cancer. Please vote. So again, 63% voting for the new adjuvant approach. I think new adjuvant approach is probably a must in resectable triple negative breast cancer. It's in the guidelines. I think it will might dictate what you do further down the line, especially after the data that came out from the Olympia. We also had the Create X trial. We're probably going to hear about both of these. But our peers, again, all over, did choose new adjuvant being the third. Carboplatin has added on benefit in terms of PCR. Uh, immunotherapy does improve response, and platinum agents are not still recommended as full in the adjuvant setting, though in the new adjuvant setting, they are uh, probably uh, a must. So according to the uh, early breast cancer ESMO uh, clinical uh, guidelines, treatment and follow-up, new adjuvant approach is definitely uh, uh, preferred for resectable triple negative breast cancer early stage that are highly sensitive to chemotherapy. High response rate have been seen with checkpoint inhibitors uh, when they are combined with chemotherapy in the first line. And I would add on that platinum-based therapy is probably a, a must as we'll see in the coming uh, presentations. With that, that's my our final question for tonight. Thank you for voting. I'll stop sharing my screen and hand it over to uh, Professor Meher and to Professor uh, Ibrahim and Fadi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahsen, for this uh, quiz and this clear uh, 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 question and answers. Uh, let's uh, and thank you, Dr. Farhad, Dr. Sami, for inviting me to the panelist. Uh, let us go next. Uh, go on to the next um, presentation uh, with Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Asim from Farhad, Iraq. I, I don't. I think it's here. So uh, this presentation will uh, will be presented by Dr. Fadi Farhat. Uh, he's uh, the president of the. He's uh, let let us say uh, let, in Arabic. Uh, he's. يعني هو أهم شيء نعرفه كصديق ل as our friends international Arabic and for Syrians. And uh, he's the president of the cancer research group, uh, collaborative group, and the head of the hematology oncology uh, department, uh, Hamoud Hospital University uh, Medical Center, Lebanon. He's, uh, he's going. He is going to speak uh, for uh, a trouble negative breast cancer landscape. So please go, uh, Dr. Fadi. Thank you, dear. Thank oh. you very much, uh, Dr. Maher. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohsin, for this uh, very nice interpretation of the questions, because giving the answer is good, but interpretation is excellent. Uh, Dr. Khaled Ibrahim, uh, thank you for your presence. And uh, our uh, big brother, Dr. Sami Khatib, it's always a big thank. Um, also, I would like to thank our audience. We are now at 110. Impressive, thank you very much for those who are attending. Um, on behavior of uh, uh, Dr. Tahseen Rubai, who had uh, an urgent familial uh, issue, um, I will present uh, this, uh, uh, this presentation. Uh, so it's, it's talking about the triple negative, it's kind of introduction. We know very well, as you see in the, uh, in the pink, the breast is the really uh, uh, 
the, the leader in the um, incidence for uh, female breast cancer, and but it's not the one uh, in, uh, in the death. So the incidence is higher than the uh, uh, death, which means that probably we are uh, gaining uh, somehow the battle with the breast cancer. Uh, also, we have to know that <coughs> and to say that the incidence is different between countries. And this is probably due, <coughs> pardon, this is probably due to the, uh, to the uh, not only the detection, the screening, but also uh, the lifestyle. We know very well that. And it's very important to say that breast cancer is really heterogeneous as disease and it, 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 it contains uh, multiple subtypes. For those who are uh, old, uh, yani mature and old like we are, we know very well that when we started, it was only breast cancer, then after ERPR positive, then after HER2, now we are really uh, defining the tumor with a different way. Remember, there's what we call the, uh, the genomic uh, classification and there is the uh, histopathological. So if we talk about the genomic due to the gene expression, uh, we can see that we have mainly uh, five types, and it's as uh, was seen by Dr. Uh, shown by Dr. Uh, uh, Mohsin. It's more than that even, but mainly we retain the liminal types, the basal and the HER2 uh, positive enriched, but still uh, we are adding more and more subtypes. But for us, it's good to remember these subtypes. Uh, now, is there any specific risk factor for triple negative breast cancer? It seems that the African American uh, uh, has more uh, triple negative than others. Uh, uh, the premenopausal status by itself, because apparently it's more in the premenopausal situation. Uh, the increasing parity might be the reason, which is really not uh, not uh, clear why. The younger age at first term pregnancy. Uh, the shorter duration of breastfeeding and lactation suppression techniques uh, with the elevated waist to hip ratio, uh, apparently these seems to be a risk factors. Is it really a risk factor or simply because it's the characteristic of uh, this population, the African American and other who has uh, such, uh, such uh, status, I don't know. Uh, the pathological characteristic here, it's more stable. We know that it's a grade three mainly, we have usually high proliferation rate, nuclear pleomorphism. Uh, we have more invasion and we have more necrosis. We have more uh, P53 mutation and we have a BRCA1 uh, germline mutation more expressed in such tumors. And when it comes to immunophenotyping <coughs> characteristic, we know that it's HER2 negative and ER negative. That's why we call it triple negative. And we know also that the picadurine is negative, P63 is negative, and the EGFR is positive, or what we call HER1. Cytokeratin 5, 6 positive, SECIT positive, Vimentin positive. And you know that these marker, um, uh, uh, for example, the Vimentin might, might be found in more in the, in the uh, sarcomas. No, we have it here. And uh, we know also, and that's the importance of, of the... Uh, of the basal-like breast cancer uh, subtype. Uh, if you look to the blue, this line, you find that the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, survival is worse by itself. Being basal-like will lead to a worse survival compared to, for example, the liminal subtype. So it's really uh, bad uh, when having triple negative. And, Recurrence also is more frequent. So again, it, 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 it explains the poor prognosis. Now, uh, uh, it seems that it's chemosensitive. And for us, yes, we had some cases of triple negative breast cancer, many of cases of triple negative breast cancer, even if it's chemosensitive in some cases, but still the prognosis and the long-term survival is bad. We see that these patients will relapse quickly and will be a, a last of, uh, of life. I mean, they will uh, die of this tumor. And uh, knowing that the breast cancer is, is generally considered as non-immunogenic tumor uh, due to its low mutational load and poor immune infiltrate, 
like for example in the luminous type uh, 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 we know that the triple negative is somehow different because uh, there is a more uh, tumor infiltrate lymphocytes in this uh, in this uh, uh, cancer cells and in the uh, micro environment uh, there is an expression of immune invasion molecule uh, in micro environment the pdl1 uh, there is also genomic instability and high highest number of mutation, which which lead to, to, to say that these tumors are hot. So uh, the, the TNBC is different from the general breast cancer. And we know that the uh, chemotherapy remains the cornerstone till the breakthrough data. It was really the cornerstone uh, in, in these diseases. Uh, and here there is no need, you know all very well, uh, the escape from immune development the escape from immune surveillance is a hallmark of cancer is considered the uh, the main region uh, reason uh, like uh, activation invasion etc so i will not go through it but look it's really uh, a very extensive uh, 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 landscape of uh, of escaping from the immunocontrol now what about the immunotherapy in cancer also, it's already well known. We are talking a lot about it in different indication, uh, 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 saying that initially the, uh, the immune uh, uh, surveillance hypothesis uh, uh, means that the immune system who, who plays a key role in, in controlling the tumor growth uh, uh, would be, and, and the, the incidence of cancer would be more uh, greater when there is a, a problem in the immune system, when there is a lack of ability uh, to identify and eliminate abnormal tumor cells. And for that, there has been many and different way. And um, generally there's big four groups of, of, of intervention. Is it the vaccination uh, uh, that is yet early to talk about? We know the cytokines where it's already have been working in some type of tumor like renal, uh, and uh, there is enhancement of antigen presentation. Uh, and here the idea is to, to have more, uh, more antigens in order to be captured by the uh, T cells. And there is the immuno checkpoint inhibitor, which, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, prevent, which, which prevent the excessive T cell activity. So uh, the goal here in the treatment is to inhibit the inhibitor. We know that the PD-L1 and PD-1 are, are, are behind the, uh, the dysfunction of the immune system. We know that the PD-1 receptor in green, you can see it in green, the PD-1 receptor normally is expressed in, in immune cells, including T cells, even inactivated. And we know that activated T cell will increase, upregulate the PD-1. So the PD-1 is there on the T cells, okay, and the immune cells. And when there is an activation, there is an upgrade for PD-1. We also know that the tumor cells have what we call the PD-L1 and PD-L2 ligands. And we know that these ligands, the PD-1 and PD-L2, when they will be binded to the PD-1, they will block it. This will allow tumor cells to evade the immune response because the T cells is inactivated. So these ligands will block the receptor PD-1 and su such way the tumor cell, the, the cytotic T cell will be inactivated and thus the tumor will escape from the, uh, from the control of the immune system. And if we use an anti-PD-1, or anti-PD-L1, uh, in, in such cases, we might uh, block uh, this control, the same principle like the anti-estrogen or anti-androgen. The idea is to separate the ligand from the receptor. And in this way, this might uh, uh, reactivate the uh, T cell and will lead to the death of the tumor cell theoretically. Practically in the tumor and in the triple negative breast cancer, uh, it's important to talk about the immunotherapy uh, because the, the, uh, the level of, of uh, T cells in the, the, of the PDL1 is the PD1, uh, PDL1 is highly expressed in such tumors. 
and uh, uh, will not go through that longly, but it will help on prolonging uh, survival. I'm sorry. So with that, I will finish the presentation. And it was uh, a kind of introduction to the immunotherapy in general and in triple negative breast cancer. With that, I thank you, and I give the floor to the uh, to the uh, panelists. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fadi. I think we'll uh, keep the question uh, till the end of uh, the activity. What do you think, Dr. Maher? I, 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 let, uh, let us you know, keep the questions uh, at the end, and I will. Uh, you know, our friends from Lebanon will introduce right now uh, Dr. Nidal. I think to, to go on to the to the next presentation. Uh, just if I can make a comment, uh, you know that we have a translator. So for those who prefer to speak in French, it's possible. Uh, to uh, giving uh, presentations or asking in French, it will be translated to English, just to know for the audience and for the speakers and panelists. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Khalid, are you hearing us? If you are not, I will introduce uh, Dr. Nidal. Uh, but before that, uh, let them know uh, happiness to, uh, to see uh, many of Syrians in the participants' name. And uh, Dr. Maha Raisel, the, uh, the head of, of our uh, oncology society, uh, Dr. Maha Manashi Taban, our colleagues from Syria, many of them. Uh, uh, I, I already see right now Dr. Nidal Khadr uh, from Syria. Uh, Dr. Nidal is uh, the head of the uh, oncology department from Mashfa Ibn Nafis. Uh, please go and uh, the title and the presentation, Dr. Nidal. Introduce your title and the presentation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Maher, for this presentation. I will thank. Uh, uh, all the team of this uh, nice meeting. Uh, my presentation uh, is about the recent advances in the treatment of early stage triple negative breast cancer and the role of immunotherapy. Next. I'm uh, Dr. Nidal Khadar, head of the department, oncology department at Ibn Nafis Hospital. I am graduated from uh, France. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, the French accent in my talk. Uh, don't, uh, we have many uh, trials that address the question of the role of immunotherapy in the early stage of triple negative breast cancer. Uh, uh, in adjuvant or in new adjuvant setting, there are many agents, uh, anti-BD1 or anti-BDL1, adizilizumab, durvalumab, pembrolizumab. I will focus in, the, in the three trials in patient 031, uh, which evaluate the role of atezolizumab in new adjuvant and adjuvant treatment. The second is I spy 2 which evaluate the uh, role of uh, pembrolizumab in the new adjuvant setting. And finally, the uh, uh, keynote 522 uh, trial, uh, which address the uh, role of pembrolizumab uh, also uh, may uh, in the uh, new adjuvant and adjuvant uh, therapy in these in these patients with uh, early stage uh, triple uh, negative breast cancer. Next, first uh, the uh, impression zero thirty one. This uh, is a randomized double blind placebo controlled phase three trial. We have. Uh, 333 patients uh, previously untreated, stage two and three. Uh, the patients uh, were randomized in uh, two arms. The first one, the uh, investigation arm, uh, the patient have received uh, 12 weeks of napatitaxel, then four cycle of AC, 
uh, two uh, every two weeks uh, with the addition of atezolizumab as immunotherapy in this arm. The second arm, the placebo arm or the, or the control arm, the patient here have received the same uh, chemotherapy uh, with uh, placebo. After the surgery, uh, in, the, in the first arm, the patient uh, continued at the Gizuma for uh, 11 doses. And in the second uh, arm, the control arm, the patient continued uh, the observation. As a primary end point, uh, end point, we have pathology complete response in, the, uh, in all of the population and the uh, uh, PCR in the subgroup of patients with PDL1 positive. The secondary endpoint, uh, uh, event free survival, disease free survival, overall survival in the subgroup of uh, PDL1 positive, and uh, also the safety of the treatment. Next. Please, next. In this trial, the uh, first endpoint, the uh, PCR, pathologic complete response. Uh, we uh, this slide shows that uh, there is very important increase in PCR from 41.1 percent in the control arm to 57.6 percent in the atezolizumab arm. Uh, so we have uh, absolute benefit of 16.5 percent, uh, uh, which was statistically. Uh, significant with p-value 0.0044. Next. Uh, this benefit was uh, consistent in all of the subgroup. In the subgroup of patients with BDL1 positive, the benefit, the absolute benefit was 19.5%. Uh, and uh, in the uh, subgroup of uh, patients with BDL1 negative, also, we have a benefit, uh, absolute benefit, 13.3%. This trial demonstrated, have demonstrated the very important role of atezolizumab as adjuvant, as a new adjuvant treatment in these patients. Next. Next. The next uh, study is uh, ISPY2. Next. In this trial also, uh, we have an improvement in uh, pathologic complete response, also an uh, improvement in event-free survival with adding pembrolizumab immunotherapy to the uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy. Next. The third uh, study is uh, Keynote 522. Next. We know that uh, pembrolizumab showed anti-tumor activity and manageable safe, safety in metastatic uh, triple negative breast cancer, especially in the first line. Uh, also, in a new uh, the new adjuvant pembrolizumab with chemotherapy showed manageable safety and anti-tumor activity in early uh, triple negative breast cancer in previous uh, trial. Next. In this trial of Keynote 522, which is a phase three study, uh, and in other studies, we have uh, some question uh, that we haven't uh, resp uh, response. First, who, which, who the patient uh, who benefit the most of the immunotherapy? Do, two, what is the uh, optimal chemotherapy in this patient? Three. What, are, what is the role of immunotherapy in the adjuvant setting? Next. This trial, uh, we have in this trial, we have 1,174 patients uh, newly diagnosed with uh, stage two or three triple negative breast cancer. The patient uh, was randomized in two arms. The first, uh, in the first arm, the patient received four cycles of carboplatin baclitaxel, then four cycles of AC, uh, with the addition of pembrolizumab, do uh, 200 milligram uh, every three weeks. In the second arm, the control arm, 
the same chemotherapy with placebo. Uh, after the uh, new achievement and after the surgery, in the first uh, arm, the pembro arm, the patient continued pembrolizumab uh, for nine uh, cycles, and in the placebo control, uh, placebo uh, uh, arm, continued observation or placebo treatment. The primary endpoint in this uh, trial was uh, pathologic complete response and event-free survival. Secondary on point were uh, overall survival and adverse events. And there were uh, another exploratory on point uh, as uh, residual disease, uh, PCR by subgroup, and the relation uh, between EFS and PCR. Uh, it is, uh, this uh, trial uh, is designed to demonstrate the role and the importance, important role of uh, immunotherapy here, uh, pembrolizumab, in, uh, with uh, this uh, uh, most effective uh, chemotherapy. We know that uh, carbo uh, platinum compound and anthracycline have uh, profound uh, uh, anti-tumor, immunogenic uh, tumor, uh, anti-tumor effect. Uh, but the interaction between the immunotherapy and the uh, uh, excuse me between the uh, chemotherapy and the uh, immune uh, system is not clear and uh, may uh, uh, require more uh, investigation and more trials uh, next next slide in this uh, trial uh, the patient were randomized in uh, between March uh, 2017 and September 2018. Uh, in the PEMBRO arm, we have 784 patients. And in the placebo uh, arm, we have uh, 390 patients. Uh, the first analysis were in the, all the population intention to treat uh, group uh, with follow-up for 39 months in uh, all in the two arms. Next. Uh, in the, the baseline characteristic uh, uh, as age, performance status, uh, PDL1 status, uh, tumor size, nodal in, uh, involvement uh, were uh, well balanced and uh, between the two arms. Next. The first uh, endpoint was the uh, PC, uh, PCR, pathologic complete response. Uh, uh, the, the first analysis two years ago, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we showed that uh, we, there were improvement in PCR, 14% uh, in favor of pembrolizumab. Next. Next. Next, uh, next slide. Next. Okay. Uh, this improvement in uh, pathologic complete sport, uh, to response was translated into improvement also in event-free survival. EFS uh, was 91% uh, in uh, pembrolizumab arm versus 85% uh, in placebo arm. Next. So uh, uh, this uh, trial, uh, we have uh, important role of pembrolizumab in the uh, early stage of uh, triple negative breast cancer in adjuvant and new adjuvant setting. Uh, was the pembrolizumab was given for one year. It is difficult to know uh, which phase of uh, treatment contribute in this. Uh, good uh, outcome. Uh, is it the uh, new adjuvant phase or the adjuvant phase? It is not clear in this trial. May uh, uh, perhaps uh, this uh, uh, may require more investigation and further uh, trial. Next, next, next slide. Okay. Uh, 
recently, uh, after three years of uh, randomization, the benefit of uh, event-free survival was uh, consistent uh, with uh, uh, 84% in the PEMPRO arm and 76% in the placebo arm. Next. As uh, first uh, EFS events, the, the, the more important, the distant recurrence, which was 7.7% uh, in the PEMPRO uh, uh, arm versus 13.1% uh, in the placebo arm. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, recurrence was uh, more in the placebo, the distant recurrence was more in the placebo to, uh, arm and were, were le was less in the PEMPRO uh, arm. Next. This benefit uh, was consistent in uh, across all uh, subgroup of the trial of the of patients. We have a similar uh, benefit uh, in both uh, positive and negative node patients. Also, we have similar benefit uh, in BDL1 positive and BDL1 negative patients, as we see here. Uh, next slide. Uh, uh, here, uh, this is like it's, it's very important the relation uh, between EFS and PCR. We have two subgroup of patients. The first, the patient who uh, have achieved uh, passage complete response. Here, it is clear that the, this improvement in passage complete response is uh, consistent with a good out outcome. Uh, the uh, pathology complete response and the event-free survival was better in the patient who received uh, the immunotherapy, the pembrolizumab. In the in law, uh, in the uh, in the law, the second subgroup of patients who didn't achieve the pathology complete response, so there was there was a residual disease. Here, uh, the event-free survival was better in patient who also is, uh, achieved, uh, uh, who uh, received uh, the immunotherapy. In the patient uh, who uh, with residual disease, uh, uh, it is difficult uh, to uh, to know what is the optimal treatment. Uh, uh, what is the role of capsitabine, for example? What is the role of uh, PARP inhibition? Uh, in this trial, it is uh, not uh, easy to respond to this situation. Uh, I think it, it will require more uh, trial or further trial and more investigation for a response uh, 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 for this question. The other slide. Next. Here also the... Uh, the distant PFS and distant uh, RFS was in favor of uh, pembrolizumab arm. Next. Next slide, please. Uh, finally, the overall survival. Uh, as we see here, uh, there, there is a trend in uh, overall survival in favor of uh, giving immunotherapy and giving pembrolizumab. Uh, the result is uh, uh, early uh, in this time. Uh, we must wait uh, uh, some time for, for the final uh, analysis. Uh, the trial is ongoing, and we hope that the overall survival benefit uh, will be uh, more, uh, clear, more uh, clear. Next slide. Uh, what about the adverse events of uh, treatment in combined phase? Here, uh, in this slide, we see the, that the uh, uh, adver uh, adverse events is identical, is not uh, different of the uh, adverse uh, events uh, of chemotherapy, the, the known side effects of chemotherapy. Uh, the addition of immunotherapy 
uh, doesn't increase the toxicity of non uh, the non toxicity of chemotherapy. The next, this next slide, this is a uh, uh, side effects or adverse event in the adjuvant setting in all the combined uh, treatment. Next slide. The uh, what about the immunomediated adverse event? Here we, we uh, this adverse event is more clear in the uh, uh, immunotherapy uh, arm, mainly the endocrine endocrine uh, pathy, the uh, toxicity, uh, scan toxicity. Here, uh, if we see uh, here in this slide, the more uh, adverse event is in the new adjuvant setting. Next slide. Uh, in the adjuvant uh, uh, phase, the uh, adverse event is less in the, uh, than in the new adjuvant setting. Most of the uh, adverse event is grade one. It is easily man uh, manageable. Uh, sometimes with uh, stop uh, stopping treatment, uh, sometimes with uh, the administration of steroids, and uh, in some cases, hormonal reemplacement. Next, for conclusion, still to play conclusion, uh, the, uh, Keynote 522 is the first. Uh, phase three trial of pembrolizumab in early triple negative breast cancer. In the new adjuvant and adjuvant setting, new adjuvant pembrolizumab with chemotherapy met its dual primary endpoint, statistically significant and clinically, uh, clinically meaningful increase in uh, pathologic complete response and improvement in event free survival. At this early time point, uh, there was a favorable trend for overall survival in the BIMPRO group. Uh, Follow-up is uh, ongoing. Uh, safety, no new safety concern. Most uh, immunomediated adverse events occurred in the new adjuvant phase. It was low-grade and manageable with treatment interruption, steroid administration, and or hormonal replacement. This result support pembrolizumab with platinum containing new adjuvant chemotherapy, followed, followed by adjuvant pembrolizumab as a new standard of care treatment regimen for patients with high risk, early stage, triple negative based cancer. Next slide. Uh, a lot of open clinical questions remain. Uh, what is the, the impact of adju adjuvant immunotherapy? What is the, is the relevance of capsicitabine in the patient who didn't uh, achieve uh, pathologic complete response? Uh, what uh, concurrent or sequential capsitabine and immunotherapy? We know that uh, the caps, uh, uh, some treatment uh, is not efficacious after immunotherapy, for example, the uh, PARP inhibition, inhibitor. Uh, what about the incorporation of other targeted agent, PARP inhibitor, for example? Uh, and uh, do all patients need immunotherapy? If, we, uh, if there are any biomarker for more selection of patients for immunotherapy? This question, uh, uh, it is difficult uh, to do re response uh, in this time. Uh, in the future, perhaps, we, we are going to have the response by other studies by further investigation. Thank you for uh, your listening and for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Nidal. It was an excellent presentation. Uh, I, I'm, I may add, I may add something. I like very much, it's an excellent presentation. I like the last slide, actually. As much as we have uh, uh, answers, as much as we have questions more in this, uh, in, in this setting, and, and namely, after the good results that you presented, uh, are you hearing me? 
Yes, 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 doctor. Yes. Yes. After the excellent results. Yes, yes. We are with you. Yes. Uh, so, so, so I might, I, I might add little bit, little things uh, of uh, of your last slide. Actually, when you started, you started by a very, very uh, interesting uh, statement. Who will benefit from immunotherapy? And this is a big, a very big problem because for the time being, uh, we cannot, we don't have enough data in our hand to tell who will benefit from immunotherapy in the new adjuvant setting. And uh, this, uh, and we are relying on the CPS, and I don't think the CPS is enough for certifying our patient. This is this is one one thing. And uh, now, as you know, a lot of data are being exploring the the tumor uh, uh, infiltration in the tumor bed that can be a predictive for for patient to receive immune therapy. In as much as you know, immune therapy. It's, 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 it's a good thing, but it's problematic in many instances, uh, especially when we're talking about side effects, although it's manageable, but you know, we're talking about uh, triple negative uh, breast cancer. These are very young uh, patients uh, pro having problem with thyroid. Sometimes it's irreversible, you know, better than me. Having a problem with fertility, you know, all, the, all these things. And the other thing is the cost. Uh, uh, now, the other the other issue should we continue with immunotherapy after having a complete pathological response? But it's another question. In the, in the trial, you know, that is, uh, as as you told me, as you told me, it's not answered. But this is something to be explored. Now, uh, uh, a very interesting. Doctor uh, uh, Khaled, can I can I can I can I, answer, can I answer a couple of your things? One. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, will, I, will, I will continue my last question and then you, you, you can answer. The, the last thing that is perplexing for me, I was answering, I was asking myself, now in, in the keynote 522, all, all patients were, uh, were strictly triple negative. What about a patient that, uh, that having one or two or three percent positive estrogen uh, uh, positive? Uh, would they benefit from this or not? Well, you know, these are plenty of questions that, uh, yes. you know, it's, uh, it's indefinitely. Yes, please answer. Uh, for your uh, last uh, question, this trial uh, didn't address this uh, issue. Uh, if there is uh, some yeah. degree of uh, yeah. uh, hormonal receptor positivity, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know that's that's uh, yes, yes. Yeah, but it's an interesting question. Uh, so, so there isn't any response any for this question. It is not uh no, no, I'm addressed thinking, in so this I'm not asking. Uh, I'm sharing idea. I'm just sharing idea. I'm not asking. Yes, yes, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. We we, we need more investigation. We more we need more uh, trial in the future. Uh, and this is the trial is ongoing also. Uh, it is not think, uh, finish it. I think we, we need to, to get a couple of uh, questions and notes. Um, uh, uh, first notes from Dr. Basim Bahrani is uh, good notes, actually, uh, good note. Two issue uh, he mentioned about one of the mortality and the death higher than the control arm in the KN study. And uh, the second, will the co cost of Bumbro uh, justify the sec second, uh, the, the two small, uh, two small benefits? And it's That's not very good. And uh, let us uh, get uh, uh, one question. Uh, uh, can I, can I, one of the can problem, I uh, problem of the immune therapy is, uh, the, is a financial uh, issue. Uh, yes. Especially in our country, in developing oh. countries, yes, I I, I uh, agree with this idea. Uh, and we have a couple of questions from Isa and from uh, Doctor Dr. Isa and uh, Doctor Mamina. They asking about the the, uh, the can we add a carboplatin to the new adjuvant therapy in early in triple negative. Uh, breast cancer, as as Dr. Mahsin uh, interpre uh, inter uh, how interpret the, the, the quiz. Yes, uh, we can uh, uh, add blatin to the new adjuvant and, and uh, 
we, we, we can reach challenge uh, as well uh, in the stage four setting, but it's not recommended in the adjuvant uh, setting uh, uh, indeed. This, uh, any, any, anyone would, uh, would uh, like to add any uh, answer for? Uh, sure. Uh, can, sure, sure, can I, sure, it's not recommended. It's not recommended for sure. Uh, by the way, one of the questions is was talking about cisazitumab uh, gevotican. You know, it's a very interesting drug. I, I think it's not, it's not, of course, it's not approved now in the first line uh, setting on the early breast cancer. Uh, recently, it was uh, approved in, in the metastatic setting in, in the States and in Europe. This is a, a drug conjugate. Uh, I will not take, maybe Fadi will elaborate on that uh, after, after that, but it is a very, very interesting drug. So the question is not about only platinum. It's about, as you mentioned, it's about sequencing after having uh, PCR, sequencing immune therapy with, uh, with uh, Xilota or uh, immune therapy with uh, uh, this drug, because I think I think it will move. It will move forward. And the uh, guys, when we, we presented, I think Fadi, uh, remember when we presented the data on prostate cancer, it's, it's showing very very interesting results. And now being approved after two lines in metastatic setting, uh, uh, I, I I had the opportunity just to see how, how the drug is being now uh, explored. It's, it's being moved forward and maybe you will see it. You will see it e even in the early setting of breast cancer. So, so you know, uh, platinum, yes, but uh, a lot of, lot of trials now trying to, to see the sequencing or the combination. But I, I like very, very, very much the, the issue of cost. We are Can all, I... all the, the issue of cost. Dr. Dr. Khalid and Dr. Yes. Maher. Uh, Dr. Basim Al Bahraini wanted to enter, make intervention, and your co colleague, the panelist, Dr. Mohsen Mukhtar, also yes. would like to make comments. So, if of we course. can give him, yeah, <laughs> Mohsen, please, because there is many questions that we can make interpretation on. Okay, we, we have two we have two questions. Do we add carboplatin to the new adjuvant in super negative breast cancer? The answer is yes. We have data from the brightness trial that you must add platinum in triple negative breast cancer. It adds on into PCR. Is there a place for dual immunotherapy, CTLA plus anti-PD1 in triple negative breast cancer? No. As for Dr. Basim Bahrani's uh, comment on um, Keynote 5 to 2. If we look at the event-free survival, hazard ratio 0.68, at three years, it is exactly like the HERA trial where we shifted everybody to Herceptin in the uh, adjuvant setting for uh, HER2 positive breast cancer. Exactly the same hazard ratio. Benefit 32% event-free survival at um, Three years, it was actually 0.68 for the uh, for the HERA trial and 0.67 for the Keynote 5 to 2. Cost is an issue, yes. I think that is something we need to work on as uh, uh, um, a whole community for our patients because it does add benefit for the patients in terms of event-free survival. Uh, I think the cost is not any, the cost is, Probably not our issue as much as it is for the government, but but we need to provoke with the companies to bring down the cost of these uh, these medications for our patients. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree. Thank you very much, Doctor Nidal. It was very nice. Thank, thank you, Bahrain, thank you for, for you. Thank you for you. Uh, Messi. Okay. So Should we move to the next? Let, let, let us move to the next uh, presentation. Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Khalid, uh, your turn right now to, to, Thank uh, to you. reintroduce. Well, it's, 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 a pleasure, it's a pleasure to introduce a brother and uh, a colleague. And, uh, it's, it's, it's more than 22 years, Sheikh Fadid. It's more. Right. Well, uh, I, it's I, almost I, the same. Uh, Number of years with our wives. 
Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Bro uh, friends and brothers for all of us. Thank you, thank you. So, so it's it. Uh, I, I think I think uh, I think Dr. Fadi now will will present uh, uh, the future the future uh, uh, research because he's an expert in research. The future research in the field of triple negative breast cancer. Fadi, it's, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in, indeed, uh, Yani, I was happy to hear all the comments and the questions because uh, really this is uh, the main, uh, the main, Yani, uh, humble uh, the main problem for the future in the uh, in the era of immunotherapy and specifically in the triple negative breast cancer. So after a small introduction. I will talk about the pivotal trials, biomarkers for immunotherapy, uh, unanswered question, and upcoming trials somehow. So remember again, uh, uh, many, many uh, subtypes of triple negative. And although it, it's heterogeneous, again, we say that we have a bad prognosis. And we know that immunotherapy uh, seems uh, to be uh, a good strategy to treat. But uh, remember again, and, and you proved it before my talk, that there is many questions that should be answered before uh, really uh, reaching a long survival and approving many of these drugs. Uh, uh, so we know that uh, there is a high mutation uh, rate. That's why the immunotherapy is helping. We know also that chemotherapy will boost the action of this immunotherapy by uh, modulating and, uh, the, by the immunomodulatory uh, activity. Uh, uh, we know also that uh, this, remember this talk is about the early stage, not metastatic. And remember that uh, we know that the combo uh, of immunotherapy was proven in M1 setting and uh, uh, many, uh, many combo, and uh, which, which is normal to, to do when we have a uh, an improvement in the efficacy in adjuvant and metastatic setting, we usually move to the early stage. And that's why uh, the neoadjuvant uh, uh, was started, launched, and we know that the long-term outcome uh, uh, will be uh, more evident in such trial. Uh, and also, we know now that the neoadjuvant is, is recommended, I'm talking about in general and in about immunotherapy, is recommended for all, uh, almost all triple negative breast cancer. And we uh, probably in the future, probably the PEMBRO should be added in the uh, neoadjuvant uh, 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 protocols uh, studied. And uh, there was two uh, pivotal trial, we know very well the uh, keynote uh, 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 five to two, and the I am passion and both demonstrated a marked improvement in PCR. Uh, and the adverse event were increased, but a patient almost could continue the treatment. And from those trial, we, uh, 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 we received fascinating information uh, that is not really enough, uh, enough clear for us. Uh, 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 first, the PDL expression in the tumor predicts for response to chemotherapy, even if we, the CPI is not uh, there. Uh, also, uh, uh, there is no impact of PDL1 status on uh, immunotherapy. So, when you have PDL1, you know that there is better response even for chemotherapy alone. But the PDL1 will not impact the activity of immunotherapy, knowing that in both arms uh, it's approved. And we know that if the PDL1 uh, uh, is positive in the tumor, uh, the tumor uh, is more uh, probably will, uh, will, will have more chance to respond. Uh, and also, we know from the keynote trial, uh, these, what, what, what we have learned that lymph node uh, uh, benefit of PEMBRO is amplified in node positive versus node negative. Uh, uh, but at the same time, it appears that the nodal status has no impact on, on, on uh, event free survival. So if it's not positive or not negative, uh, there, will, there will be a, a good outcome, event free survival. 
uh, but the effect of PEMBRO is amplified and, and positive. But indeed, I have to say that a recent publication, uh, a few, an update very recent showed that uh, the, the effect of PEMBRO is in, on both node positive and node negative. So apparently, the end status has no impact uh, from now on. We have to consider it like that. Also, we know that the PCR, uh, uh, reach, reaching the PCR, uh, will uh, show a better outcome regardless of treatment, immunotherapy or no immunotherapy. And it seems that uh, the PCR is greater in stage two than three. No PCR, PEMBRO chemo improved three years survival. So even if your patient was now, will not show a PCR, giving PEMBRO with chemotherapy will uh, improve the event-free survival versus the chemotherapy alone. So again, the PDL1 is not uh, is not uh, the, the enough as a marker. It's a it's a prognostic marker, not predictive. Uh, lymph node has no impact. The PCR is somehow a, a prognostic marker, but not predictive for the treatment because the PEMBRO, the immunotherapy, will improve the uh, three event fifth survival uh, if there is PCR of no with PCR. And uh, uh, what, what about the biomarker? Uh, we can say that in early and advanced stage breast cancer, uh, the, the biomarker, the, the, the tumor and the immune cell microenvironment are probably differ, different. Uh, uh, and this offer a, a therapeutic opportunity for the incorporation of CPI. We know that the PDL1 mRNA expression is higher in triple negative and is associated, associated with improved clinical outcomes. Uh, that's what we say, uh, Yani, we just said. And uh, the predictive biomarker uh, in MTNBC uh, um, is a predictive marker for the uh, responsiveness. And it's non predictive for uh, early stage TNBC. So, why is it a predictive marker in metastatic but not in the early stage? Uh, we do not understand uh, very well. So, again, a lot of questions, a lot of uh, non clear ideas. Why we have to use the PDL1 expression in the uh, first line, second, in, in the first line metastatic disease, but we should not, we do not need it in the early uh, stage. Uh, also, we learned from the uh, neoadjuvant trials uh, uh, of early stage triple negative breast cancer that the uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocyte is a promising as biomarker for response. Why? Because the presence of the stromal uh, till tumor infiltrate lymphocyte is associated with a higher PCR. So probably, and uh, remember this was uh, presented 10 years, 15 years ago, in different, uh, different uh, uh, studies, publication, but it was not followed. Now, again, we are talking about the TIL, probably uh, tumors with TIL, uh, tumor infocyte lymphocytes, will have a better uh, outcome, better PCR rate. And uh, 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 it was shown in a beta analysis of uh, 3,700 uh, 3, patients. And it seems that even in the residual disease, if we have higher TIL, there's an improvement of the overall survival. So TIL apparently is an important uh, marker for the future. And also we have to mention that there is a, a, a different impact of the presence of TIL in the stroma or in the tumor. So uh, the, the study of uh, uh, Gepar Nuevo, Gepar Nuevo trial showed that the stromal TILs is associated with a PCR higher, PCR, but the intratumal uh, TILs uh, uh, will not predict the PCR. So again, uh, it's somehow uh, hard to understand why the TIL in the microenvironment stroma is giving better uh, outcomes while in the, uh, in, in the tumor has no impact on it. And also, uh, 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 sorry. Also, we, we, we should uh, conclude from that, uh, that uh, the investigation uh, 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 for the future uh, should take in consideration the microenvironment composi composition and the changes in the TIL composition and the correlation for therapy. So as you can see, we have uh, many markers with discordant results, the TIL, the PDL1, 
and others. There's also even the TMB will not go through it. So uh, a lot of, uh, of, of uh, uh, conclusions and uh, uh, discordance in, from these trials. So what are the unanswered questions and you uh, approached it somehow. Uh, uh, let's start with the anthracycline. Is the anthracycline important? Uh, among five trials, only one did not show a strong numerical improvement in PCR. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the regimen in that study lacked, lacked an anthracycline. So it seems, yes, it's important. But the question, uh, is the improvement shown in four uh, uh, studies uh, will be enough to say that the intracycline is really needed in such trials. Uh, and apparently uh, there is many studies showing that the uh, intracycline is a, a stronger immunomodulator. Uh, so adding the intracycline will increase the immunomodulatory effect uh, on the tumor cells. So this is the answer. Should we go for the anthracycline? Should it be uh, every two or three weeks? We'll ask that later on. Is carboplatin necessary? Apparently, in, in one of the uh, neoadjuvant trial, uh, the, best, uh, uh, the best EFS was achieved with the carbopag versus pag followed by AC. So it's like we can say that in, in some trials, carboplatin in, in neoadjuvant seems interesting, but we cannot answer uh, the question. Another question was also asked by Dr. Khalid, uh, 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 what, what to do in, in, in after? So for the residual disease after PEMBRO, if we are giving the tumor, uh, we do not have a, a, a PCR, what to do? There is a German trial trying to answer this question. And we know that the uh, sasituzumab uh, 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 versus the treatment of his in choice also is a trial. Uh, ongoing. So we have two trials that might answer the question, what's the best way to do when we have a residual disease, when we do not have a PCR? And remember, this also will, uh, uh, we, we remember the trials after the HER2 therapy, if we have an, a, a, a positive a, a, no, a PCR, we continue the same treatment. If we have a non-PCR, we go for the TDM for another treatment. Also, the question of capsaicin. We know that it's recommended to give the capsaicin when there is a residual after new after neoadjuvant treatment. But all these immunotherapy didn't approach the capsaicin. There is some trials now trying to answer the role of capsaicin in adjuvant after completing uh, the neoadjuvant. Uh, sorry. Also, uh, 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 new approaches may be uh, uh, beneficial. We know that there is a very, we know now that there is uh, many uh, uh, drugs approved in the metastatic setting and even in the adjuvant setting, like, uh, 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 like the antibraca. Uh, so, uh, these also treatment were not included in this trial. So uh, the neoadjuvant actual trial uh, are lacking the, uh, uh, the role, are, are missing the role of these adjuvant treatment, specifically in patients with BRCA mutations or others. And what about the duration of treatment in the post neoadjuvant setting? Uh, uh, this is also will be approached. We don't know uh, if longer is, is, uh, is really uh, better. Remember, even if uh, we say that immunotherapy, the immune checkpoint inhibitor are not really toxic, but still uh, for those who are observing some toxicity, it's difficult to continue uh, for a long period. And again, like anti-HER2 therapy, we have the trial for one year and then after for two years and for six months. And we saw that the one year was the best choice. So what's the treatment? What's the duration of the treatment of PEMBRO? This is an important question. Uh, and also, if we, uh, if we uh, uh, talk about the dose dense AC, we know very well the importance of the, the dose dense AC uh, that give uh, 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 important benefit. Uh, but in the ER negative, it was uh, a, a mild benefit, modest benefit. So in the IM patient 031 patients with a neoadjuvant dose dent and anthracycline, 
uh, has shown no improvement globally because the trial was, uh, was not approved. So what's the role of the dose dense AC? Uh, uh, again, we don't know. Uh, uh, no adjuvant capsaicin uh, was provided again for the PCR patient. Uh, so again, to uh, retrial, uh, I am answering the question. Uh, unknown whether we know, we don't know if the carboplatin will increase uh, the response, and we don't know the uh, long uh, duration the the duration of adjuvant in case of PCR of or of non PCR because uh, the the sequence is not really clear and. In, in our hands. So the future direction should be, we should uh, study the two versus three weeks antracycline because in the era of uh, immune check, check, checkpoint inhibitors, it might be different. It, it might have different uh, efficacy. And this also to remember, remember when we used to give, for example, uh, with the, uh, in, in lymphomas, we had to do LP and then after with the arrival of rituximab, we stopped to do it. So uh, the the introduction or the uh, uh, the 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 uh, upgrade of the treatment with the new classes might change the strategy. So should we still think about the two weeks or three weeks might be uh, as good uh, for the anthracycline? Uh, could the anthracycline sparing regimen be utilized to avoid cardiotoxicity and hematotoxicity? And again, remember the anti HER2 trials with the TCH versus the, uh, the other trials. And uh, we should explore biomarkers to eliminate adjuvant PEMBRO in PCR. So again, should we use uh, PEMBRO when patient is in complete remission, pathological complete remission, uh, 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 because probably uh, the, the improvement done in the adjuvant setting will be enough. And we should investigate the upfront immunotherapy uh, to frame the immune response before administering chemotherapy. So the idea, uh, we are giving both. What about giving immunotherapy alone followed by chemotherapy? I mean, sequencing in the neoadjuvant immunochemotherapy rather than give it uh, both together. This is uh, somehow. Uh, what about the capsaicin? The future work should establish how to optimally incorporate capsaicin, uh, which is a standard of care. Uh, maybe this will help in order to uh, to to increase the uh, the overall survival as it was shown without the immunotherapy. Uh, 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 data from other trials showed that the combination capicitabine with pembro is safe, and we will uh, trials will assess. There is some trial assessing the sequential therapy uh, uh, versus the combo therapy. Uh, what about the uh, uh, agent? We talked about the anti BRCA and others. Uh, how should we uh, include it in these trials? Uh, probably the, in the future, uh, the PARP inhibitor uh, will be used as monotherapy or combined with PEMBRO. So if the, if the patient has PCR, should we give PEMBRO or not? If he has PCR and uh, uh, she's BRCA, should we give uh, a PARP inhibitor? So again, a lot of questions. Uh, should we give it or with or without PEMBRO? And should we give it in general in case of PCR? And remember that the PARP inhibitors potentially boost immune response to immunotherapy by increasing tumor specific neoantigen release, increasing TMB and promoting PDL1 expression. So yes, probably the combination might be and uh, can be interesting. So again, a lot of question. Also the anti trap 2 monoclonal ADC, sasituzumab, uh, which giving overall survival benefit versus chemo and triple negative. Uh, uh, what sh how should we incorporate it? And uh, should we do it or not? The novel her 2 directed ADC, trastuzumab, seems to play a role. And I heard from Dr. Uh, Khalid about the uh, ER, PR positive, about the low uh, rate of uh, of uh, estrogen expression, uh, should we consider it as triple negative or is it a, a, a low ER? And it's true because we are confronting, we are, uh, we are facing this problem in our uh, life, in our practical life. 
And uh, also we know now that there is the HER2 low expression. We know very well that these type of tumors with, with low level of HER2, the, what we call the, the, uh, uh, by the, uh, 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 the genomic typing, uh, the HER2 uh, low or by, uh, why, well, why, when the IHC is one plus, we know that these patients might benefit from the anti-HER2 treatment. So what's the role of trastuzumab deruxcan in these cases. And concerning the toxicity, and you, you, you have been talking about it, the short and long-term effects related to immunorelated adverse event will need to be closely monitored. I, I am sure that uh, all of us, we are still lacking somehow uh, the, 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 the full confidence of controlling the adverse event first, because it might happen even later. It might happen in the first weeks and up to six, eight, and 10 months. And second, because we do not have yet the big experience. So we have to pay attention for this. And uh, 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 you know that there is some light threatening toxicity were observed. That, that, that will push us to be vigilant and to manage the, uh, this toxicity uh, uh, quickly. And it might, very, it might be very important, for example, in some cases of adrenal insufficiency. So uh, remember to dose the cortisol, that's what I do in my practice. I do it from time to time. Uh, we uh, do the cortisol uh, uh, level uh, later. We are not yet using it in, at initiation, but probably you have to start uh, at, at the initiation of the treatment, at the surgery, and then after. Uh, and uh, we we should stratify the analysis to, up, to uh, the analysis to optimize patient selection for inclusion of immunotherapy. Some patients are cured with intracycline and texane therapy alone. So why should we include the immunotherapy again? It's the question of uh, who to uh, for whom to give the chemotherapy. It was exposed by by you, uh, our colleagues, and also. Uh, 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 what which biomarker to use? Is there any new biomarkers? And it seems that the MRD, which we are uh, 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 using normally in hematology, uh, it, it, it's ap apparently very, very interesting because in the non-PCR, but MRD negative, the results are the same if, if, uh, as if the PCR and MRD are negative. So in the case, of negativity of MRD, independently of the status of the PCR or non-PCR, we have the same result, which means that MRD apparently is more important than the PCR. Okay, so again, I, I repeat it, if your patient have shown no PCR, there is no pathological complete response, but the MRD is negative, you will have the same result as if the PCR and MRD are negative. So it's very important. It, 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 it push us uh, to, uh, to, to try and to use this uh, marker. Hypothesis recently confirmed in a retrospective analysis of IM vigor in uh, uh, transitional cell carcinoma that even, even if the primary endpoint was not reached, the overall survival observed for MRD positive uh, got benefit from the treatment with the adjuvant immunotherapy. And there was no improvement for the MRD negative. In other language, so in the we are taking the example of a transitional cell carcinoma. So if we have MRD negative, the adjuvant immunotherapy has no role. What does it mean? It means that really the MRD, which is equal to the PCR in our uh, expression, uh, uh, we know that in this case, the patient is already cru uh, uh, cured and the addition of immunotherapy will have no benefit. While if after the treatment, the MRD is positive, the adjuvant immunotherapy will, uh, will, uh, will uh, increase the outcome. Again, so the MRD seems an important biomarker for the future. Other biomarkers may help to refine the adjuvant treatment strategy, including the TMB, which is controversial. And some data with the NEVO EP, we, we saw the TMB as important factor and uh, marker and other not. 
uh, we you don't know the tumor microenvironment composition is important and we show how the till is important in the tumor microenvironment and the circulating immune cells so as you can see the biomarker which which we are in big need probably will will be uh, will be explored more and more in the future now we go to the financial toxicity and uh, uh, dr brahim said it's important for him dr saifo said that also in, in in their country it's a problem dr mohsin said that it's the problem of the government and all of you all, all of uh, my colleague are right i have to answer the medical question and I have to think about the financial, but I cannot resolve it. So probably we can help by, uh, by, uh, by uh, understanding more and more to whom we will give the treatment. So access to this novel regimen in, in limited countries uh, 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 will, 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 be, will need really a, a refining of indication for these patients. And as Dr. Bahrani said, if, in his opinion, the benefit is low, maybe we have to keep this for other indications, knowing that, in my opinion, the benefit from the neoadjuvant immunotherapy, even if it's in its first steps and stages, it will improve with time. So I finished this presentation by saying that recent clinical advances make a cure a reality to more patients with high risk early stage TMBC and the approval of PEMBRO introduced the immunotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting, but still we have challenges how to, which uh, marker to use, biomarker to use, and what's the role of precision medicine uh, in, 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 in this uh, treatment. And we have to discuss the risk uh, and the toxicities and the duration of immunotherapy. Adjuvant trial uh, are here. Uh, uh, it helps to understand the the uh, the the the, uh, the role by escalating and de-escalating. So we have to study more the need of immunotherapy in adjuvant or the option of skipping it, and by using the PCR of and MRD. So many question: What's the role of MRD positivity negativity? What's the role of PCR non PCR in case of MRD negative? Should we uh, uh, use the PEMBRO or immunotherapy in general uh, in all cases, or should we skip it for some cases? And uh, finally, what will be the duration of immunotherapy? And this will improve the, uh, the, the, the immunotherapy. So again, who needs the immunotherapy? Balance between efficacy against toxicity. What's the optimal chemotherapy backbone? Is it a platinum for BRCA patients, a BRCA mutated patient, or it's still the anthracycline on uh, cyclophosphamide, the taxane. Uh, uh, what's the optimal duration if we have PCR, we approach this, and the, sequ the, the sequences of the treatment in the uh, adjuvant uh, after surgery, should we give PEMBRO plus the targeted therapy in sequences or only targeted therapy uh, and what should we use after PEMBRO in case, in case of progression in such aggressive and, uh, and uh, 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 very uh, uh, hard to treat disease? What should we give after PEMBRO? Uh, I think this will help us uh, uh, to uh, uh, make more advances in the era of a triple neg and near adjuvant of triple negative breast cancer. Uh, with that, I finish my presentation. Uh, and I leave the floor for the panelists for question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fadi. It was beautiful. It was a very, very nice presentation. I personally learned a lot. And uh, as you, uh, as you, as you told, uh, uh, let's uh, let's open the floor for discussion. Actually, you, you know, you, you did the, uh, are you hearing me? I think there is some questions in the box and in chat box. Yes, there is many questions. Can carboplatin be added to neoadjuvant therapy in early 
triple next triple negative breast cancer i think it was answered by doctor uh, uh, by doctor ma uh, mohsin okay do you, do you want to take the question khalid should we start with taxin in neo actually, actually i'm actually i'm not seeing them that's why Okay, the question, should we start with taxane and neoadjuvant therapy? You can combine it to, with carboplatin as we, 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 we already uh, we answered before. And uh, I also uh, said we carry challenge with carbo uh, in stage four, uh, triple negative, uh, especially BRCA uh, when and two mutations. Okay, Dr. Bahsan, do you want also to, to take the questions? There is there is a question in French. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very good question. Who would I not choose? And I think Dr. Bahsan definitely, uh, I, I, I totally agree. The cost and, and nobody more so than Egypt, the cost is, is definitely an issue. Now, who wouldn't I use Debrofort? I think... The answer is the very large tumors, the T4s, the M3s. These I know probably they're not going to achieve a PCR. These probably I wouldn't <coughs> sort of waste uh, the, the money on in, in them. But for the early patients, the ones that are T1, uh, 2, 3, and N1, N2, these definitely I would add Fembro for them. The question of carbo has come up quite a bit and as I said I answered it we have the trial the brightness trial that said that carbo is essential both in BRCA positive and BRCA negative patients to achieve PCR didn't show on event free survival but in peace terms of PCR yes and uh, Fadi thank you very very much for your excellent talk thank you thank you we have also another other questions. Uh, you want me to take the question and you answer it? Uh, yeah, OK. So uh, there is a question in French. I will translate it. Or oh, 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 the, the, the translator can do it. Dans les fonds métastatiques et devant l'indisponibilité de l'immunothérapie, quel chimio vous jugerez plus efficace? In the metastatic setting and the uh, absence of immunotherapy and availability, <laughs> Which type of chemo will you judge efficacious? So okay. this is... I, I, I will go for that one. It, it all depends on what you've given in the adjuvant setting. If you haven't used platinum-based, use it. If you haven't used taxanes, use it. Then your choice is capecitabine, erebulin, um, liposomal doxorubicin. They are all as efficacious as each other. The only one that has shown probably some higher responses is um, Erebulin. That's the only one. But obviously, again, that comes in with uh, uh, finance, some slightly higher financial toxicity. Mm. And I wouldn't use combinations, except in BRCA. And obviously, if you have a BRCA positive patient, then PARP inhibitor uh, Olympiad uh, would give you uh, benefit. As so second right. Probably to go is uh, in, in a metronomic. Uh, yes, approach, I probably. totally agree. I totally agree. Metronomic is definitely one of the best things, and that's why I personally use Cape Sitem a lot. Okay, there was a question for locally advanced. Uh, yani, uh, please excuse us; we will not answer it uh, because the session is for early stage. We prefer. Is there a place for dual immunotherapy anti CTL4 PTL1? Doctor, uh, uh, doctor, answer on it. Yes, there is no real data. There is some uh, trials, phase one and two, uh, not more. So we'll keep with with it. Uh, other questions uh, for locally advanced. What's the preferred cycle? Can we add carboplatin immunotherapy? Is not available. Uh, Okay, excuse me, I will go for it. Does triple negative metastatic carcinoma treated, uh, does triple negative metaplastic carcinoma treated triple negative IDC, NST, I don't know what's NST, but I can say for the metaplastic carcinoma triple negative, 
metaplastic triple negative, the nivolumab, ipilumab uh, was uh, indicated. There is a trial for nivo-ipi in the metaplastic carcinoma. Okay. If the patient, if the patient received neoadjuvant chemotherapy, carbo and taxol, then surgery not, but no PCR. Which type of chemotherapy we can give? Uh, Doctor uh, Ma, uh, uh, Doctor Tassin, just answer it. Uh, uh, Mukhtar, Doctor Mukhtar, just answer it. I think there is no more questions. Uh, the audience can raise their hand if they have any question. And I am happy we are still with 114 uh, uh, attendees. Thank you very much. Dr. Basim, I smart saw Dr. Basim. Yeah, I have a small comment regarding Dr. Mohsen Mukhtar. I think there is a role for government. I don't want to make this session as a health economy, but there's a, they can negotiate the price they can go with uh, risk sharing uh, policies. If I get patient new adjuvant immunotherapy and there's no response, they should reimburse this, the whole while back to the patient or money back. Those strategies can help some of the patients where they can pay if they're responding and they can reimburse if they're not responding. Dr. Totally Mahler, agree. Totally Dr. agree Mahler, Totally agree. No, I totally agree. I, I totally agree. But I think our role is to push the government and to push the pharma to lower the prices and, and reach an agreement. Yes, yes, know. yes. Yeah, that, Dr. That, that, Basim, that. Dr. Basim, that's what Dr. Mukhtar said. He said that this problem is the problem of government and يعني, it's not uh, nassal minha, but he pushed it to the government. So another question. Uh, who is the best candidate for neoadjuvant Pembro? A tricky questions. Yalla, who would like to answer? Who is the best candidate for neoadjuvant Pembro, knowing that it's for high risk? Yani, in other terms, which who will get the maximum benefit? Doctor Mukhtar, Hadi la Alex, soal saab. I, I, la, I think again. I think uh, I uh, patient T4 N3 huge disease. This one I would not. Uh, push for the use of immuno. But for the patients who have smaller disease that I know will achieve a higher rate of PCR, I think these are the ones that I would push for immunotherapy. Remember the keynote 522 didn't have any patients that were T4 or N3. So uh, if we look at the, our patients, unfortunately, a lot of our patients come in very advanced. These ones, again, I don't think that uh, Pembro is going to add on to the PCR. Hello, Anna. I have to. I would like to add, uh, even if we are sponsored somehow by uh, by MSD. But when I was looking to the trials, I saw that the number of patients in the keynote compared to other was very high, more than one thousand. While, for example, in the in the Atezo trials, it was three hundred. And we know very well that it might play a role when you increase the sample first. Second. Uh, when you also ex ex exclude the high risk patient, because T4, it's a very high, uh, I mean, it's a, an aggressive disease and the T3. So maybe, maybe if we understand better the role later on, we will have to include such patients. So it's an answer question in my opinion, but what we have from this trial, the breakthrough trial, the keynote 522, it's opening uh, the, 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 the pathway for the future. So for, for the time being, what Dr. Mukhtar said, it's very clear and it's true. We have to follow as per the trial to give these patients. No, for the future, I'm not sure that we will stick to these, to these protocols, because, to these indications, because we have many, many uh, things to learn from here. Okay. Is it time for intra-free protocols? Unfortunately, not yet. It was answered. Any role for Atezo and Neo adjuvant? Uh, recently, Roche withdrew the submission of the uh, uh, I am passion trial, the Atezo and Neo adjuvant, uh, because uh, the EMA uh, 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 said that uh, the answer, the, the, the answer of the of Roche to the questions exposed by the EMA were not uh, satisfying them, so it was not approved uh, in the uh, EMA. 
And with that, I think we finished uh, all the question. Yeah, yeah. The okay. Yeah. So uh, very hot, very hot session. Really yeah. happy, really happy from all speakers, all attendees. Thanks to, to Dr. Basim Bahrani and Dr. Mahaman Ashki being with us. Uh, just to uh, let the floor to Dr. Fadi Farahat, I would like to announce our next uh, session, educational session next Tuesday, May 31st at 7 p.m. And it will be about breast cancer module three. So Dr. Farahat, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I think uh, we had all enough from being on uh, uh, our screen. So uh, thank you again for the uh, speakers, for the panelists. Thank you very much. The panelists played, in my opinion, better role today than the speakers. Thank you for our uh, chairman, uh, Dr. Samuel Khatib. Uh, thank you for Science Pro, specifically Vanessa, for her uh, support. And a big, big thank for the attendees, uh, for uh, their uh, presence. And see you uh, next week, uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.